Good afternoon and welcome to episode number 642 and this is part three of the dick series <laughs> so I couldn't resist um, this topic today, topic today is guys had not to be a dick she would like you more I had so many other ways of saying that title but that's the way that came out so first of all before we jump into the topic at hand let me introduce myself so you know who I am what I'm about my name is Barry Selby I'm a best-selling author inspirational sometimes entertaining speaker and relationship attraction expert and I help women create balance and love life and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine that's also why I do these talks every day because they are called messages for the masculine inspiring the feminine heart or inspiring your feminine heart that started about two little little under two and a half years ago which is why up to now I'm 630 642 um, which I do these daily now and usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time I'm doing actually 30 minutes early I snuck it in early because I'm not a commitment um, life is busy already what can I say so today's topic um, is part three of a series not intentionally a series but the way it worked out um, the first one was man boys will be boys wasn't okay don't be a dick that was part one which was on Sunday that was part that was episode 640 yesterday's was um, <laughs> it was helping the ladies avoid dicks by saying how to how to how to how to how to um, identify a, well, I, this was a real challenging title because there was so much innuendo in it but basically yes this title was helping women understand what how, what dickish behavior is and how to avoid it today is an encouragement and hopefully some insights that will help men's be less dickish yes this is a really interesting term to keep using but it's the one that keeps getting attention so why not use it and yes there is an experiment in social awareness of people going let me check that out because there's the word dick in the title Welcome to my world. Anyway, so let's jump in, shall we? So there is a prevalent. Let me let me recap a couple of things quickly. There is a prevalent um, shift that's happening at the moment, which some people are aware of and some people are not. That shift is the awakening and the. Um, there's another word for this. It's coming in a second. It's the awakening and it's the evolution. That's a good word of the feminine. And as I said in the title of my broadcast and my introduction to myself, I'm a, cha a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I'm all for this. And I talked before about how the shift from patriarchy to matriarchy, and it's actually different. Those words don't even fit anymore. But it's an evolution of our culture to bring women, or I should say, to see women coming into the foreground to be equal, to be lead in leadership, and to take charge. However, and the however is, as I said just now, some people are aware of this there are a lot of people who are not men and women it's not just men who are not aware of this but amongst the male side of the population who are not aware of this is unfortunately a uh, prolongate prolongation yeah prolongation of dickishness <laughs> it's, it's going to keep tickling me i guess and so there are men doing dickish things which is what has actually i would not say started but certainly has contributed to the me too conversation and with Time's Up being part of the conversation too, I want to help wake men up and women to what's been happening that doesn't work and shift the paradigm so that men become more mature, conscious, adult, masculine, heart-centered, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, how to be less dickish? How to be less of a dick? So this is for the men to observe and witness. This is for the ladies to listen in on and hopefully they'll see insights as well. And by the way, ladies, if you see anything else I missed, please add it to the conversation below. And if you know any men who should watch this, please share it with them. If you know any women who should watch this as well, share it with them as well. So simply put, one of the simplest things that men can do, and this is one of the hardest ones too, is to become self-aware. Oh my God, self-awareness, what a concept. But for a lot of men, it's an alien, alien subject. And the thing about it is, there's so many layers, but also I'm looking back at my own history when I just saw it, so it was a flashback. If you saw in my eyes, I was looking back 30 years to when I started this journey, 35 years. Um, <laughs> that awareness seems to come in stages. So, hi Della, nice to see you in my broadcast. Oh, I forgot to mention this. This is Facebook Live, in case you're wondering why I'm talking to people you can't see. You're watching on YouTube, watching the replay. This is a Facebook Live first. So if you want to catch me live and interact with me as I'm talking, then find me on Facebook and I'll give you the links for that at the end of this broadcast. So the beginning of my own journey, just to personalize this, 
I wasn't necessarily, well, okay, yeah, yeah, I was a bit of a dick, but not in the way that most people think of dicks. <laughs> I wasn't an arrogant SOB um, diminishing women, which is what a lot of what dickish behavior is like. I was actually just simply the nice guy, which is the other end of the spectrum, but still not a evolved conscious awareness, put it that way. In fact, the journey for me has been interesting because I started, I started this 35 years ago, actually in 84, so literally 35 years ago. And from then until 2007, I still hadn't really understood what true masculine awakening was. I didn't know what, I didn't know what it was, I don't know how to do it. But 2007 was a game changer for me, which led me to this work I do now. So I'm very passionate about that last segment of my journey. And so what I've become aware of and looking back at my own spectrum and journey, I had learned how to move from my head to my heart in my, in my awareness work, but as a man, I hadn't gone into the masculine heart, which is a little different. So the first step again is self-awareness, but it's more than just becoming aware because for most men, they will, actually it's true for women too actually, becoming self-aware is a layering exercise, a revealing exercise, because a lot of times we become self-aware of just the surface. We don't become self-aware of who we really are, what motivates us, makes us, what drives us, and how we function, and how we're received. And the challenge for most of us is we don't ask for feedback. So, step two. So, step one is self. Step one is self-awareness, which is a starting point. So, hi, Leanne. What did you say there? Sorry, I just saw your comment come up. After listening yesterday, you took empowered action and released a dick from your life. I sent you sent a message outlining the spectrum of dickishness to educate. I believe he received the insight. Powerful. Well, I'm glad. I'm. That's that's awesome. Thank you for letting me know. I'm not saying I'm telling you to go and like change your life because of what I'm saying, but if it's working for you, then please do. Um, so step one is self-awareness. But really in a lot, of way, a lot of ways, the awareness comes from asking questions of other people because a lot of us don't know. Oh, he said, he said thank you for the lesson and feedback. Wow, maybe he became aware. Self-awareness, as I mentioned at the beginning. That's very cool. So the, the piece that is really challenging for men is to ask others anything. We men have been trained to be independent, take charge, and run the show. Unfortunately, for a lot of men, that's become an ego-driven, selfish, non-listening way of doing things. The humbling act of a man to ask women, especially the women in his life, for feedback that's without any limitations. So saying, please let me know how I'm doing without <clears throat> limiting them to anything at all. So saying, whatever you want to tell me is okay. Is a big, big risk for all of men. <coughs> Excuse me. Still clearing out the cough from the other day. This step to moving into, and I realize I'm going already to the advanced stuff because I've got a lot of simpler stuff to play with. So let me, let me just go into the rest of this path. And I'll go back to some of the lighter things you can do. So this is the big one, which is to really be the, put your, put, for men to put themselves in the hands of any woman they're around to say, I really appreciate any feedback you have because I feel like I've been off track and I want to learn how to be on track. So asking for feedback is a powerful tool to get out of dickishness into maturity. So that's, that's, that's the second one. So self-awareness, asking for feedback is two. Three, of course, is taking course corrective action. To This is actually 12 set stuff in a way, is to make amends. So it's basically to clear up some, clear up any bad communications, maybe apologize, send emails, letters, phone calls, communications with people you have wronged, if you believe that's the case, and make right. Not necessarily to, ch to change the relationship, but to clear things up because there's a, still a, a war between you and them. So that's number three. These are the deep ones. So let me just switch for a second because I may come back to these, but back to the simpler ones. This is gonna sound so simplistic, but it's so much more to that than this. Gentlemen, Notice a woman is not her body. It's gonna sound so like, oh yeah, that's duh. But the challenge is for us men, we are pretty hardwired to notice a woman physically. It's almost subconscious. And ladies, if you've been around men, you notice that's pretty obvious for them, unless they're actually so devoted to a relationship or, or they're gay or they're so old they've lost that thing, but most men don't. There is a, an almost default look first to see how a woman looks before they know who they are. So, 
The answer is not to stay there, I guess is what I'm saying, because the truth is we, stopping that habit is almost turning off our ability to be a man. But don't stay in that place to move forward straight away or to move as quick as you, to basically to move strictly to who is this person, to sort of to, to actually connect to who the person is, not to what they look like. That's a step towards respecting women. Because for a lot of men, it's so um, objectifying them. It's such an objectification to do this, to change it from that to personal interaction and to be a place of respect will transform everything. So that's another one. So actually, you know, I'll add that one to that'll be number four. Yeah, that fits in the long list. Okay, so now the simpler one. Um, I didn't put the word in the title intentionally because otherwise I'd give it all away. But one of the ways that men can be less dickish is to act like gentlemen. And I've done talks about this before, so I'll recap a few of the simplest things you can do. As a gentleman, you accommodate women meaning that you do things to provide space for them. So you open doors for them. You help them, women on with their coats. You go on the street side of them when you're walking down the street. You open the car door for them. You make sure you shop for them and so they feel supported and safe. One of the biggest things I talked about this in the masculine and feminine conversation with relationship is the biggest thing a man can do for a woman is do two things is to make her feel safe and to make her feel taken care of. And I don't mean like for the rest of her life, just means that you take care of the need. So if there's a busted faucet and you fix it, you're her hero. And you make her safe because you make her safe by being present. One of the biggest things that men forget to do is learn how to stay present with the woman they're with. And I don't mean just romantically, in conversation, in interaction, in, um, in the moment. So having gentlemanly actions which include being present, staying present, listening is another big one by the way. Um, this is actually part of the masculine feminine conversation but it does apply to dickishness. Again something we men do as a default is we have a desire to fix and resolve everything innately. So if you start telling us your problems we're going to try and fix them. Initially ladies you may need to tell your man to say, honey, I don't need you. To, I don't want you to fix anything. I just want you to listen. For us as men, the biggest lesson I've had to learn myself is that when a woman wants to talk to me, I don't have to fix anything. I have to turn. I almost turn that switch off, and it's not always easy to do. So again, because when because the thing is, when a man fixes something, he's like, I'm the champion. I fix everything. I'm good. If you didn't want it fixed, it's like being steamrolled, and that's very dickish too. So by learning how to. Um, and step into a place of receptivity to listen and be present is probably for most women one of the most effective things that you can do to support her because she doesn't need necessarily to be fixed most times most time she doesn't unless you ask for, ask for that help she just needs to be heard it's all different so that's another one so back on the gentlemanly conduct piece again so it's about um, hanging out helping with their coats opening doors taking care and supporting them being present to them walking on the street side of them on the on the um, on the road, all that stuff under gentle, gentlemanly conduct is something that is a tool to help you be less of a dick. However, as I said at the beginning, the deep stuff about self-awareness, feedback, and all the other pieces are absolutely the deeper work that will transform your way of being so that you no longer carry that um, label around anymore. So this is for the gents to understand this, for ladies, and you get this, hope you see some clarity in this. There's a few more things brewing, but I don't have some clarity in them right now. So. Let me just pause for a second to see if there's anything that is relevant to jump into this one. And again, but these are this is the third one of my talks about the dickish about being a dick and not being a dick and all that sort of stuff. So I've had fun with these and they make it and getting quite a bit of attention, which is good. Um, what else do I want to speak to? Oh, <laughs> this is part of the Me Too conversation. For men to be less dicks is to recognize that no means no. As simple as that sounds, that is the bit, one of the biggest leverage points to shift your behavior because men have got a bad habit of not listening. I mentioned the previous one about how listening without trying to fix is a big step. The piece before that is to actually learn how to listen in the first place. A lot of men don't listen. I didn't for a long time. So I learned that. I remembered that skill as well as I went through. That's why it's a part of my mastery of my clients. It's a challenge for women to trust a man when he won't listen to them. And especially in relationship, 
but in employment as well, in other places, in peer review. It's like there's such a sense for a lot of men that women don't count, women's voices don't land. And the challenge what happens for a lot of women is they get to become, um, for some women, is that they will either give up because they don't get heard or they'll keep belaboring the point so many times they'll sound to the man like a nag. No win either way. So for men is to be willing to listen to what the women around you say, to actually be willing to listen, and then to be in real, honest dialogue. These sound so fundamental, but I realize if this people was applied in businesses, and in relationships, it would change half the planet. It's so amazing how, how much of a lack of awareness there is in so many places in our culture. And so this, I hope, will contribute to that. Let's see if there's anything else before I wrap up. Um, hmm. There's another piece, but I think it may be for tomorrow. Yeah. It's not coming through, so I'm going to let it be as it is. So that is that's my additional piece today for this conversation about uh, dickish behavior. And hopefully the men who are watching this get some value from this. What was number three again? Um... <laughs> Maybe I look at the replay myself. It was first one. First one was, oh yes, thank you. Make amends. Yes, thank you. Yeah, is to actually to take cause creative action. So yeah, thank you. So first of all is um, self awareness, and I talked about that in deep, greater detail. Second one is to um, ask for feedback, and third is to make amends based on the feedback you heard. As in, if you heard things that you screwed up on, make some cause corrective action, whether it's to beg forgiveness, why don't we beg it for ask for forgiveness, whether it's to fix something that was broken, maybe it's to change your communication style. But yeah. No, I think I think make amends was right. I I refer to the to the twelve step reference because that's a, that's a big piece of their work too. So I think that with this one, amends will do the job. So hopefully that'll be of use to you. So you've got four, five things on the deep side and about three on three or four that was it, yeah, course corrective action. Yes. You're welcome, Leanne. Um if you haven't seen the rest of, if you haven't seen my other broadcast, this is part of a series of three now about dick behavior. Um, <laughs> so the first one was um, stop doing it. The second one was as ladies had to be aware of it. And this was about how to course correct it, how to fix it. So I hope they've been of use to you. Um, with that, I think I'm going to sign off. But before I do that, let me just let you know the replays. If you haven't seen my broadcast before I do this live on my Facebook, sorry, my personal page, um, usually 5 p.m. Pacific time, but I have another appointment, so I'm doing it a little bit earlier than usual. So join me tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. The word place to find me is at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby every day, seven days a week. Uh, replays go on to my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. I also put them out onto my YouTube channel, so that's maybe where well, you may be watching them, wondering where these comments are coming from. Um, they're on the, it's on the YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. There's a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. And uh, you can watch all of those there. And finally, I have a podcast on iTunes, which is also called Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to that. That's the, some of the audio versions of my earlier uh, Facebook Lives. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. If you want to share it with anybody who you think should get benefit from this, please share it up with them as well. And I'll put a, I'll put a couple of links in the comments again. Uh, one will be the contact form in case you want to reach out and talk. The second one's going to be if you're a lady looking for love and you have some challenges and this is kind of helping you, um, there's, a, there's a discovery session link there as well. So thank you for watching. Appreciate you being with me and I will see you again tomorrow, probably at 5 p.m. We'll see what happens. Today got earlier. I just realized my plans today got changed. So uh, that's it. No problem, Carrie. You have to watch the replay from the beginning, but also watch yesterday's and Sunday's because all three fit together. So thanks for being here, Carrie. And thank you, Leanne, for your feedback. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Another day, another topic. It might be around the dick behavior. We'll see what happens. Um, but thanks for being with me, and I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.